Is it there? Mm-hmm. Kill the overlay. Standing by. Can we get rid of that overlay? Hi. <laughs> Here we are, a little bit of a glitch there at the beginning. Welcome to the free media exposure with podcast webinar. And thank you so much for joining us today. We're really excited to be sharing some important information that you should know as a business person about how podcasts either as a host or as a guest can be helping you in your business. And in today's webinar, we're going to be looking at the benefits of the media of podcasting, either as host or interviewed guest. But I want to start right off with a couple of reasons why you should be paying attention to the media of podcasting as a valuable form of content for your business. For any business attempting to gain some visibility and reach new audiences, feeding the beast of social media with its ever-increasing demand for fresh content and paid ads, for a rapidly disappearing ROI, you can probably relate to the issue of how long does my media actually last? Well, some recent research gave us some good insight into that. And when we're looking at social media, most of that disappears within minutes to a few hours with blog posts being one of the few things that actually has a persistent uh, life and longevity out there for people to be finding our content. However, what the marketing companies didn't look at at the time, even as little as three years ago, was the fact that podcasts actually have a greater longevity than even blogs. And your content is out there to be found for up to five years or more. Podcast content outlasts them all. In addition to that, for content broadcasting, your podcast content, when it's on one of these platforms that your podcast will be on, your content is carefully curated, unlike the mess that's on social media. It's also actively and more equitably promoted and broadcast by the platform, which is unlike social media, which is now more pay to play. And in addition, you have about a quarter billion avid consumers coming to those sites, not to be dropping their comments or to be creating their own own content, they're coming to find content to consume, long form content like yours. Kind of like Netflix for audio, but that might sound like a bit of an exaggeration because Netflix is the cornucopia of content. But actually, if you've got your podcast out there and it's properly curated, the power of podcast for your business is also acting as if it was on all of these channels as well. Imagine having your content there. But for audio, it's actually these channels. These are some of the biggest channels on the planet. And when you have podcast content, either as a host or as a guest, 
your content is there being pushed by all of these channels. The last thing I want to say about podcasts in terms of the content is the visibility hierarchy. Your blogs and your social media posts and your videos, as we saw before, they're not going to last very long and you're in competition with a billion other people. Not a lot of great visibility there. A little bit better is if you can do some guest blogging on some influential sites. Media says that, or sorry, industry says that podcasts and video podcasts actually have better visibility than these previous two. It can also be a ladder and a stepping stone to the next highest level, which is magazines and news features. And estimates are that, of course, the pinnacle is TV. So if you're just getting started and want to really turbocharge your visibility, podcasts will move your business to visibility faster than most kinds of content that you can access. When you look at it with this Venn diagram of the widely broadcast content, longevity, and the visibility, I think it's a no brainer. You should be considering podcast content as an addition to your business marketing content. So today it's not just me on the call. I'm actually being joined by Mary Chan, who will be coming in in a second. There she is. Hi, Mary. Welcome. Hello. Hello, September. Thank you for having me. Well, thanks for being here. I'm so excited to have somebody who can talk knowledgeably, as you definitely can, being a, an expert, a guru of starting one's podcast, all the tech and the processes involved, versus what I tend to champion, which is get in there and take advantage of the opportunity of being an interview guest. So, Mary, tell us a bit about your company, Organize Sound, and what you do with clients. Yeah. So, imagine creating a platform that's all your own. You have full control over it. And just like September was saying, it is all about content these days. But with social media, it gets lost in the weeds. With a podcast, you get to amplify your message with a very human-to-human -human intimate connection through your unique voice. So what I do is I empower you to launch your own podcast to share your stories and expertise. And I worked in radio for about 20 years before I was downsized. And then I started my own podcast and production company in 2018. And that is called Organized Sound Productions. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that you worked in radio. You've got that radio voice. It's gorgeous. <laughs> and I am September Smith, and my company is, of course, consulting. And through, of course, consulting, I help entrepreneurs to help leverage the opportunities and the powerful media that they can get as an interview guest on other people's podcasts. And we're going to be talking about more of that today. So let's just take a look at... On the menu today, what we're going to be looking at, we're going to be looking at why would you do it? And we have plenty of reasons why you would. What's involved, and that's something that's really important to know because as always, there's more involved than, than you assume at the get-go. The pros and cons of each, of hosting and of guesting, who it's best for, solutions and resources, some solutions that we have on either side of this fence. And then at the end of this conversation, we're going to have a Q&A to answer any of your questions. So why? What's in it for me? Why would we bother doing podcasting? So as Mary was saying, the benefits of that, just a few of the benefits would be, why would anybody want to bother doing podcasting, hosting? Or hosting side, yeah, yes. you get to control all your content. You are creating this thought leadership space and you are creating uh. original content. So kind of like what you were saying about the Netflix for audio, that's essentially what it is. You create whatever you want and you don't have this hierarchy of a media conglomerate saying, this is what you can say, you know, back in the radio days at what they were always telling the host, what they can say, how long they can talk for. And with a podcast, you don't have any of that. You get to control anything and everything that comes out of your mouth, basically. And, so, and it's a great addition to your business. I mean, if people want to find something out about you and they want to see, well, what is this person like? This is the perfect thing for them to dip in and get a sample of who you are and what yeah. you do and yeah. your whole vibe. Because, you know, if you do social media posts, if you do a blog post, they're just all words. 
But in order for someone to really get to know you, they have to hear you. And so it's about that know, like, and trust factor. How you say something through the tone of your voice changes on off the words on, on the page. So people want to hear what you sound like and how you interact with people. Yeah, definitely. And on the guesting side, why you would want to do it? Because be it hosting or be it guesting, you are taking time away from your business to be investing in these efforts. So why you would want to do it is because for me, the biggest thing is, is a differentiator. If you're out there on podcasts and you've been interviewed and all your competition, all the other people in your field just have their 2D websites and maybe, you know, the odd little video, you're going to stand out. You're an authority. There is a perceived psychological trust factor when you have been given the stage by someone else. When someone says, looks to you as the expert and says, Mary, what do you think? Psychologically, your viewers and your listeners automatically elevate you and give you more credibility than they would if it was just you talking. So for me, that is some of the big benefits and reasons why you'd want to be adding this to your business. So what's involved? So Mary? Yes. What's involved what in being a host? involved with being a host? Well, a lot of steps because you are creating a show from scratch. But we can break it down into four categories, essentially. The first important thing is your foundation. And I call this clarifying your message. So knowing exactly what you're going to be talking about, niching right down, and knowing who your listener is. Because once you find out who that listener is, it can be the same as your business avatar, your ideal client. You want to have an ideal listener as well. So any content that you create, any episodes, the guests that you want to interview has to be aligned with your ideal listener. So for example, I have a health and wellness coach. She wanted to create a podcast, but she wasn't sure should she create it for um, people who just like the health and wellness space and know about nutrition, or should she create it for people who want to have a health and wellness business, a coaching business? And so we talked about who is your ideal listener and how does that um, bring you money to your business? And so we went with your core ideal listener as the health and wellness coaches building a business, but she sprinkled in the nutrition facts and the recipes and the healthy lifestyle stuff because health and wellness coaches love that too. So you get to figure out what your niche is and talk to that and to the broader community of your, your network. And then after you clarify your message, it's time to figure out what your content is. So I touched a little bit on that with clarifying your message and your ideal listener. But once you know who your ideal listener is, you can then start creating that content. If you're having solo episodes, what are you going to be talking about? If you will be interviewing guests, who are these guests and how do they, what do they bring to the table for your show? This is all about each of your episodes. And then within the uh, content as well, just quickly to touch on organization. When you are creating each episode, you have to know which one is in the hopper. So which one has been recorded, which guest is coming um, to be recorded soon, which one has already been published. So having an organization is really key to creating that content as well, because you are wearing multiple hats in that production process. And having somebody like you to guide you through that, because the other day, when, well, a couple of weeks ago, when I actually interviewed you for my podcast, as a podcaster, when you were going through all the steps of the things you have to do in all of the organization, even I was taken aback. It was like, oh my Lord, yes, we do have to do all that stuff. So <laughs> There yeah, is a lot. Yep. There is. But when you're organized, it becomes a workflow and it just becomes another piece that you um, can do like second nature, like the back of your hand, once you get that organization mm. down. Yeah. And then you want to know your gear and hit that record button. So we're talking about microphones, the tech side of things, software that you record on, but knowing also when you record that noisy, noisy sound can be a killer of your show. So if you think of it in terms of like a radio talk show host, the host always sounds great. They have this mic that is full and rich sound. And then when they have a caller come in on that talk radio show, 
it's okay. It's not as bad to have that phone quality. It'd be great to have a person be in studio with you, but you can easily access people through the internet and have that phone call type. Uh, conversation as well. So you want to make sure you sound really, really great because if you don't sound great, people are not going to listen. It's that listener fatigue. If it takes effort to listen to your show, to get through all that background noise or the hiss in your microphone, they're not going to come back to it. Yeah. And that cannot be underestimated. A lot of people say, oh, I, I, it's not that important. It is hugely important. They know that psychologically research shows people will bail off any kind of media mm -hmm. faster with poor audio than they will with even poor video. Yep. They'll hang in yep. there if the video is poor, but the audio is good. So yeah, it's yep. really important. Yeah, there is a YouTube stat as well where YouTube did their own research and found out that if there's poor audio, even on a YouTube video, people mm -hmm. will click away after the first two to three seconds. Mm, so it's kind crazy. of like, you know, your business is a professional business. So you want to sound professional as well. And then the last piece for hosting is the launch strategy and distribution. So have a strategy to figure out how you're going to start promoting your show and marketing it. And so like when a new movie comes out, there's always a movie trailer. You want to have a trailer as well to tease and be able to use that in your social media posts and to market that you have this new show coming out. And when you do distribute it to all the places, that trailer sets the stage because you want to get your podcast on all the different platforms like Apple Podcasts and Google and Spotify. So you need a piece of audio to uh, get distributed and landed on Apple Podcasts and Google and Spotify. And a trailer is the perfect piece because you can have that out there, start talking about your show and then work on all the other moving pieces in the background before the official launch of your show. And just for, for people that are thinking about it, what I've got pictured here on the screen uh, in the pink and the purple, that's actually a guide that you offer isn't it, Mary? Um, yeah, for, that's a free a workbook. mini workbook. So like I said, the very first step is clarifying your message, laying down that foundation. That is so, so important. So if you want to get started right away, you can get this uh, mini workbook called Identify Your Ideal Listener. It's on my website. And we'll be uh, dropping the link. We'll drop the link to it. Yes. Over on YouTube in the chat. Yeah, it's visiblevoicepodcast.com forward slash listener workbook if you wanted to grab that and start your podcast right away. Mm. So that's what's involved just basically. And I'm amazed, Mary, that you actually took everything that is involved in getting a podcast started because it's a ton of work. It is a ton of and work. And you but... collapsed it into four major bullet points. Thank you. That was really amazing. Um, on my side of things, guesting what's involved. Well, I've broken down the whole process of into five steps. And there's five steps that as somebody who's getting started with guesting, you're not going to want to miss any of them. And the very first one is your signature brand story. Figure out, identify your key messaging aligned with your business goals. You don't want to just go on a podcast and just, I'll just answer the questions. No, that's a disaster. Save your, talent, save your time if that's your attitude, because your business is not going to be helped by you just getting on and chatting with somebody. You need to know what your sound bites are that is going to act as marketing for your business. Once you've got your brand story, now go out and try to find the shows that are going to be the ideal shows for you, for your message, and that they have the audience that you want to reach. There's various ways you can do that, but really important that you know your story to help you find the ones for you. But when you've got them and you've got your top 10 list, the next thing you need to do is know how to pitch them. You've got to have your get book strategy and good podcast shows reject 95% of the pitches that they receive. So knowing how to pitch in a way that gets you booked and makes you one of that 5% that gets booked is really, really important. Yeah. I would say, you know, as a host of my own podcast as well, that does interviews, you know, the pitches that I get sometimes there, you can tell there has been no forethought for it, or it's just a copy and paste form. But if you can get a great pitch to me and really hone in on what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. most likely you're on guaranteed, but you got to do the work. Yeah. In a way you're kind of asking a favor. You're asking for them to give you their stage and then 
to do a whole lot of work to create that content that showcases you. So you are a big beneficiary of that effort. Mm. So when you're pitching them, you got to make it really attractive to them. So as soon as they see the pitch that you've sent, they immediately know why you are worth having on their show and how you're going to enhance their experience and the content of their podcast. So really important to know how to pitch. After that one, you need to know how you're going to put in a perfect appearance on that podcast. And part of that is, of course, knowing your story and knowing how to weave and bob amongst the conversation and keep the conversation on track with your goals for that podcast. But in addition, it's also your equipment. You need to know your microphones. You need to know if it's a video podcast, like my podcast, She's All That Video Podcast is a video podcast. You need to know about your lighting and your microphones and your your webcam. And once you've got all those things in place and you've done it, then once that episode comes out, that's when the second phase of your work has to start. Because if you don't work really hard to market that thing and collaborate with the host to get it out there, promote it and get it in front of more people, you are wasting really valuable content. So these are the five steps that are involved in being a guest, if you want to do it really strategically and get ROI for your business. So I happen to have a guide that I share with people that actually goes into some detail about these five steps and how it is you can be planning these things for your business. Those links will be dropped in the YouTube chat, I believe, and possibly here, but whatever, they they will be available. There it is. There it is. (laughs) Yeah, no, but it's okay. <laughs> but we will have those things in the chat. The pros and the cons. As we said, we're going to get into what are the pros and the cons of even bothering with this one. So Mary, for you, what are some of the pros, the big pros yeah. of well, I being think a podcast a lot host? of the pros and cons for us are similar, mm-hmm. such as you really become influential. I think more so with your own show because you become the authority in the industry. You are creating original content. So you become the expert. What do you think about your side? Mm, I would say in some ways, depending on what your goals are, I could, I would say that guesting can actually make you more influential because if you get on 20, 30, some people have the goal of being on a hundred podcasts in a year. I think that's a little extreme, but if you are, you're all over the place and you are out there with other hosts who have influence and you're in front of their audience and network, I, I think that really kind of positions you with some authority and influence, but I agree yeah. with you. <laughs> Yeah, because you do get to showcase who you are and all your knowledge. But what I love about hosting is that you're not telling the same stories all the time. Sometimes when you go on podcast uh, as a guest, I find when I'm a guest, I do tell the same stories. But when you have Mm -hmm. your own show, you are creating that original content. You can tell a different story that speaks to what you want to market and promote in your business at that time. It is your marketing platform for selling. It's a great a sales funnel to have your own podcast. Yep. On the flip side of that, if you're somebody that only, you know, you, you know, this is what I, this is the message I need to get out there. Having to think up a new theme for every week, if, as you do, if, if you're the host, especially if you're a solo host, that can be taxing. Whereas, you know, you've got this brand story that you're going to tell. It's going to vary slightly with every interviewer and with the flow of the interview. So it's not going to sound exactly like it. And it never hurts to have people, if they decide they really like you and they start following you, if they're hearing the same message again, over and over again, that's actually not a bad thing. We know from marketing, it takes like nine, 10, 11 touches for somebody to really anchor in the ideas that you're saying. So the repetition of guesting is actually not a bad thing. Yeah, I got to say too, repetition is key in radio as well. That's where I learned all of that from. So you know, you, you do have the repetition, uh, with podcasting in general. Yeah. You know, the, the other thing I would say to, with, um, hosting your own show, I've actually had people say to me, is podcasting all interviews? And it doesn't have to be, you yeah. can create whatever show you want. Like I said earlier, there is no media conglomerate telling you that it has to be interviews. So if you are not wanting to interview people, 
feel free to create a solo show. Feel free to create a show with a co-host where you both are bantering back and forth, kind of like a roundtable discussion. You can do whatever you like with it. It can be a solo episode that's two minutes. It could be a solo episode that's 30 minutes. It's however long you want it to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, one of the other pros of um, guesting, which you can't claim this one, is, oh my God, so much more work involved in hosting than guesting. I mean, we're both podcast hosts. It's a ton of work. I mean, it's worth it, but it's a ton of work. Whereas if you're a guest, if you know what you're saying, you got that story, you know how to pitch, how to get booked, you know all the stuff about your gear, and you've got a process for marketing this stuff, you get it to the point where you just kind of wander in maybe once a month, twice a month, <laughs> yeah. put in an hour or two of work, and then you're done. Thank you. And that podcast podcast host and producer then is going to do all of the work of creating this wonderful episode showcasing you. So that's a that's a huge pro on the guesting side of things. It so is because it is a con to host your own show in that it does take a lot of work to make one successful. I mean, you can easily just plug a mic in or talk into your phone. It's not going to sound as great and professional sounding because you want that professional sound to go with your professional business, as I said earlier. So it does take a lot of work. There's lots of steps after you stop that record button and um, creating content to maintain a schedule. So there is a lot of work, but if you are looking at creating original content, then this really is for you because It's such an excellent use of content repurposing. You start with the podcast and then you can turn that episode into a blog post. You can create little snippets and make social media posts. That same content can then be switched into a newsletter and it's branded however you like. And something that I know with hosting a show that you can't do with being a guest is you can write a book from starting your podcast. Each episode you create can be a chapter. And that is how you can, if you wanted to, start a podcast today and have a book launched by next year because you're creating that book at the same time as you're creating your podcast. I have to give you that one. That is definitely true. Uh, Yeah, you're honing your message when you're going on guesting, but basically you're recycling the same message. So yeah, you're not going to get a book out of it, but you can (laughs) repurpose a lot of the content. Mm -hmm. I've done that with some of my podcast guesting. I've grabbed snippets out of it and you can make an audiogram or a blog post or whatever. Um, One con that I really, as much as I am a big advocate of guesting, one con that I would put in there is the lack of control. As Mary said, when you're hosting, you've got the control. One of the big dangers of podcast guesting is that lack of control. You cannot control how that interview is going to go. You can try, but it's down to the host. They own the show and they can say and do and act any way they want to. And I've seen some pretty kind of shockingly horrendous hosts out there actually almost trash their guests. Uh, You have no control over that. And the unfortunate thing is once they've recorded that one, if they choose to put it up, it's out there forever. You can't take it down. Your own content, you can take down if you decide like, oh, that does not show me in the, in a very good light. Yeah, it's out there for good. In fact, like as I said earlier, it's going to be showing up years from now. Yeah. So that is definitely one, a downside of guesting. Yeah. A little, as a host, a couple you of things own you can, that content. That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, a few things you can do to kind of get some control tangentially is to make sure you vetted that host and that show. If you're going to be pitching them, make sure you trust that they're going to be treating you well, they treat their guests well, and that they're going to be giving you a platform to do what you want to do. If it doesn't look like that's how it's going to roll, don't go there. So got any more other pros and cons, Mary? Well, I think just for podcasting, Um, overall, really it's a pro for both of us. It's such a low barrier of entry compared to traditional media. You know, if you Mm -hmm. wanted to have your own TV show, well, good luck with that. (laughs) That's probably really hard to do. If you wanted to have your, even your own radio show, that's hard to come by these days. Mm -hmm. And so with that, we're also not saturated in terms of blogs. There are more than 600 million blogs. And for podcasting, you still stand out because even though it's really growing, it doubled in the pandemic. It was less than a million podcasts before the pandemic. And now we're at just over 2 million today. I heard it cracked 2.3 million last week. But again, that is only on Apple Podcasts alone. So that stat really is low 
considering some podcasts are only on Spotify. They're only on YouTube and things like that. So, you know, it's definitely more than 2.3 million compared to 600 million blogs. You know, we're not oversaturated yet. You are still going to be unique in this space. Yes. Yeah. So there are pros and cons, but hey, weigh them up. And when you do that, you can figure out which option is best for you. Yeah. So can you give a thumbnail sketch, Mary? I mean, people would, are no doubt drawing their own conclusions, but can you give a thumbnail sketch in your estimation? Who, what kind of business is best suited for the hosting option? Yeah, you want to create original content. If you're after that and you want control over what is happening with your content, you definitely want your own show. If you want to be known as a thought leader, have that control as well with who you bring on to your show, you want to have your own show. So it's a great way to also be well connected in a really intimate platform to grow your sales funnel. You know, as a host, people then know, like, and trust you. And there is a stat there that says about 75 to 80% of listeners will purchase whatever you are talking about. So it's very, very influential. And if you want to be um, stop playing around with the social media al algorithms, you got to have your own show so you can control that content as well. Yeah. And yeah. oh, and one more thing with your brand yes. well, um, I forgot to mention is uh, along with controlling your content and creating your content, it's also when you have your own show, you are aligning your brand. So it's about growing your brand and brand recognition as well. Yeah, absolutely true. And that whole thing you said about um, people will buy after they've listened, that speaks to the unique nature of podcasting. They know that mm -hmm. people are going to hang and engage with that long form content for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, which is firstly unheard of. I yeah. mean, people will watch a video, especially if it's a movie, but there's nothing like the hang time of, po hang time of podcasts. People yeah. want to put in their earbuds. They want to yeah. let it rip and go to the gym or do their housework or drive their car. And they're yeah. going to hang with you longer than you're going to get to yeah. be with any potential client with any other kind of content. Edison so, Research yeah. did a stat on that. Edison Research said that podcast consumers listen to 90% of your content. Mm -hmm, versus mm -hmm. what 2% on YouTube or something like that. Yes, it's absolutely. so small or yeah. scrolling on social media. So if you have a 60 minute show, they're going to listen to what, almost the full 60 minutes of you talking, yes. listening to what you have to say, absorbing yes. your voice. And by the time they're finished listening to that, they really feel like they know you. Oh yeah. They have like, a, um, well, an emotional the, connection with you on, on a mild they, level, but they know that that's what's happening. They do. I've actually had that with a client where she went to a, uh, you know, back when we could all be in person and conventions and stuff. She was talking mm -hmm. to somebody else and somebody, someone else ran up to her and said, oh, are you so-and-so from the so-and-so podcast? And she was like, huh? What? 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 And it was because they recognized her voice from oh across my. the hall. Wow. And she wanted to meet her. Yeah. 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 There's, yeah, there's the, the pull of audio is huge. Um, if, if I was going to give a thumbnail sketch of who a podcast guesting would be right for, uh, it would be a, an individual, an organization or a business that has one or maybe two key marketing messages. So you don't want, you're not having to produce 30, 40, 50 episodes with different topics. Like you just want to drive home that one thing. You want to create something that you are known for. So that every time they see you, you're talking about this. And there's that mental connection between, oh, Mary Chan teaches people how to create podcasts. And it's this unbreakable link. Another uh, characteristic of the company for whom guesting is best, if you don't have a whole lot of time or you don't have a whole lot of help and labor on hand that can help you be producing this, it is very time consuming to have a podcast even more so to have a video podcast. And it's not just the production, it's also the marketing. Uh, Mary and I have spoken before about it. It can be an extra 10 hours, 12 hours, 16 hours or more out of your work week just to get that podcast episode out the door and be reaching new guests and all the communications and the marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't have a whole lot of time or money to throw at this thing, it might not be for you. Um, if you're thinking of starting a podcast yourself and you know you're a few months out, 
being a guest on somebody's podcast is actually a really great, great way for oh, you yeah. to get a look at behind the scenes and see how other podcasts, especially really good established podcasts, how do they operate? What are their procedures? What's their intake process? Uh, how do they deal with their guests? That can give you ideas for when you want to start your podcast. And um, in addition to, to those things, if you're a company who, again, you don't have the time, you don't have the money, and you know you want to really raise your visibility as quickly as possible, it gives you the social proof and the visibility to be on good quality podcasts that you're not going to get through any other marketing men or sorry, any other marketing efforts. So that's kind of a thumbnail for who is best for that. So weigh that up. And I mean, Mary is both, she does both guesting and hosting and I do both. So maybe for you, it's a hybrid model. So hopefully that'll help you figure out What's best yeah. for you? I find too with hosting your own show, they you yes. s- have that credibility, so you tend to be on guests on a podcast more often because they also know that you're going to care about the sound, you have the right yes. equipment, and you know how to talk. Versus, yes. oh, I read this person and they created this great article. I read. I'm going to get them on my podcast, but they're not a great speaker. So having yeah. that. Um, not saying that you have to have a radio voice or anything, but just knowing how to uh, talk about your message and what you want to say. Yeah. So, sorry, Mary, I jumped ahead here. Some people <laughs> might be asking, you know, okay, so you, you've said what's involved, uh, the pros, the cons, and who it's best for. Why can't I just do it myself? And, well, you can. Most podcasts are DIY. Any downside to that, Mary? <laughs> there are always downsides, pros and cons we were talking about. But when you do it yourself, there is a sometimes a lack of consistency because you don't have accountability partner. You're just doing it on your own. And oh, I'll just stop it. It gets hard because I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. And so having someone with you to give you the checklist on what to, you need to do to launch a podcast. Because it's not just, I'm going to record on my phone and there it is. Like, how mm-hmm. do you get it on Apple and Spotify and Google and all those places? Um, there's very specific parameters that you need to get on to um, to be approved on Apple Podcasts. And it can be very overwhelming on knowing where to start. And if, is this a good microphone? Is this a good room? Um, is this artwork good enough? Will people see it? Is it eye-catching? It's mm-hmm. a lot of little yeah. details. And then once you actually start podcasting, people don't usually get past when they're doing it by themselves. They don't get past the first four to five episodes. You know, you got to ask yourself, okay. what does it take to podcast consistently to reach yeah. your objectives? It's going to be a long-term gain to, yeah. uh, to use podcast as a marketing vehicle. So you need to get past the first 12 to five, 12 to 15 episode. That's the mark I usually gauge my clients with. If you can get past that, you've got your workflows in place, you know what you're doing. And of course you can always adjust and tweak as you go along. But if you do it, everything by yourself, it's, the chances are you're going to fade as what we call pod fading, uh, fade out and stop producing your show after the first, yeah. you know, less than 10 episodes. You know, industry estimates are that 50% of all podcasts will be abandoned in the first year. That kind of falls in under yeah. that pod fade thing. Um, and even if you look at Apple podcasts on its own, there is only 23% of podcasts in all of Apple Podcasts, again, we were saying 2.3 million. Of 2.3 million, there's only 500-ish thousand podcasts that are active. And what they define as active is have published an episode in the last 90 days. Wow. I did not see that. That's a terrible stat. It is a terrible stat. I I think that really speaks to kind of that meme, that white guy meme of like, I think I'll start a podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Quite a bit recently. A lot of people are starting podcasts, but it's, if you don't have somebody working with you and you're doing a DIY, there's a lot of stuff that you don't know what you don't know. So, um, yeah. What about for guesting? Why, why should you do it yourself? You definitely can. You definitely can. And many people do wade in and dry their hand at podcast casting. 
uh, quite often it happens because somebody's invited them on a show or they see one of those looking for a guest post in some Facebook groups. Um, if you're not used to podcast casting, then it doesn't occur to you to think, okay, they've invited me. Do I want to be on their show? Most people are like, Hey, that'd be fun. Let's give that a go. So they go on the show, but they don't have those strategies in place. So they don't end up knowing what they should be saying. The resulting episode doesn't really stand as some kind of testimony to what it is that they do uh, and why that matters and why people would want to work with them. And then quite often they don't know how to market it. So in some cases, it goes well. You're going to hit lucky. You're going to have a great host and they're going to help walk you through the production of a great episode. Uh, usually it's meh and it doesn't really do anything for your business. And in some cases, it's a nightmare and you will wish for many years to come that it was not out there on the internet for people to find when they go searching for you. And podcasts are now searchable on most search engines and people are going to be finding your episode. So yeah. you the can DIY play a approach, podcast on Google. That's a thing yes. now. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. So the DIY approach, you can sure you can do it yourself. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't suggest it. There are, there are quite a few problems in, involved with doing the DIY approach. And as we've outlined, these problems are why you might want to think of working with somebody. So the problem for you, Mary, when you decided, do you know what? I want to help people create their podcast. What, what did you see and what did you create to kind of help facilitate that? Yeah. So what I saw, again, uh, when I started the company Organized Sound Productions for podcasting in 2018, I came from it uh, because of the radio background. And I had lost my job, downsized from our, our entire department was gone. And so I created commercials in radio. And so I took that same skill set to edit people's podcasts because I thought, well, what can I make money right away? I, I need to create income for my family. and after editing people's podcasts, I also created my own and I figured out all the little nitty gritty details and was like, wow, this is a lot of work. And then through working with um, other people and networking, people kept asking me, do you have a program? Do you, what do I do? How do I start a podcast? It's so overwhelming. I search on Google and it tells me this, this and this, but I don't no, because then another website tells me this, this, and this. And the problem really was because podcasting is so new, it, it only started in 2004. It's changing all the time. Like even mm -hmm. Apple Podcasts changed everything at the end of May. They changed yeah. it all up. And so I love the industry. And so I'm always immersed in it and figuring out what's working, what's not, what's new. And so I created a program to figure out what the step-by-step -step solution is and not to give you that overwhelm because something you Google for starting a podcast could be outdated as of, like I said, two months ago. And so I've got everything up to date. I have a 12-week podcast launch program that, I mean, I call it 12 weeks, but really I understand as a business owner, we've got so many things on the go. We also have our personal family life and things are happening with the pandemic. You never know what's going to happen. So uh, it's a 12-week program where we have uh, 12 assignments and tasks that you just hone in and focus on. Each week, there's one thing. And then once you're done with that, you move on to the next one. But really, we work together to a maximum of six months because I know sometimes with some of my clients, things happen and we can't go exactly week to week to week. So it's basically 12 modules. We work together. It's a one-on-one -on -one thing. So you can bring all your questions to me and I can answer them for you as well. Because each and you're show with them is so As unique. they go forward. Yeah. 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 Each, each so show is unique. So I want to make sure that you do get that podcast launched by the end of the 12 weeks and you're not overwhelmed by anything. Yep. And you're there with them to see it through those baby steps. I yes. love that. So w for me, the problem that I was seeing was... Um, through my podcast, I was seeing all of these amazing women. My, the tagline for my podcast is conversations with women doing awesome shit. And I was seeing these business women and social impact entrepreneurs who were just like the world needed to know about them, but they really didn't have the first idea of how to articulate what it is they do 
which it's sometimes it's really hard to tell your own story. And they sure didn't know what it took to, to get their message out there by a podcast. And nowadays to survive, Small businesses doing the amazing work and even medium-sized businesses doing that, they need to get visible and they need to establish their expertise and they need to do it within a budget. And podcasting is, and podcast casting is excellent for that. But I was seeing this divide and people not being able to access this. And I personally think that this opportunity is not going to last a whole lot longer. We've got a couple of years where this is bonanza time right now to be doing this. So I thought, that's it. I want to be starting a program where I can help people figure out how to quickly get on this whole train of podcast guesting. So I started podcast guest fast track and it's a four week program. And my next intake starts on September 7th, actually. And through this one, we go through we the five things that I talked about before your brand story, the shows that you should be on, how you're going to pitch, how to do your appearance, and then what to do with it when you're finished to get ROI as part of it. But in addition to that, I also have some guest experts in the fields of professional speaking, of getting TV coverage, of print media and publicity, and they come in to talk with my clients so that by the end of the program, not only are you a stellar podcast guest, you also know how that's now going to fit into your media plan that includes TV, speaking, publicity, whatever works for you. So that's my program. At this point... I think we are ready for the Q&A. Got any questions? Yeah, bring them. <laughs> so we have Bridget Sullivan behind the scenes working with us. How do you find podcasts? Now, I, I guess that's my question because obviously... <laughs> You've already got a podcast, you know, like you're looking for podcasts. Um, the most important thing before you even start looking for the podcast is know what it is you want to say. because when you, And know the audience that you want to say it to. You want this to really be worth your while for a business, for your business. So when you know those things, then you go out and you start searching for podcasts that have the same audience you do. It doesn't necessarily have to be shows that do what you do, but they're shows that maybe are peripherally or tangentially related to what you do, they have the same audience. You can go to your favorite, like Apple, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever your favorite platform is for podcasts, and you can actually use your keywords. If you have really honed your keywords for your business and you know what your keywords are and they're the right keywords for you, when you put them into those search engines on those huge platforms, it's going to bring up shows that have the same interests and therefore most likely the same audience as you. So that's one way of looking for podcasts. Uh, there are directories. There are some uh, very comprehensive directories. There are a lot of directories that are just like the top 100 shows out there. Um, of course, if you're just getting started, you're probably not going to get on the top 100 shows. You got to work your way up to that. You don't want to be in the top 100 shows right out of the gate. You want to kind of, you know, own your skills yeah. before you get in the big in the big leagues, but um, there are also groups on Facebook, and there are platforms where you can go to find a guest, be a guest. I, I mean, my personal experience, I would not recommend them because the people quite often that are on there, if they if they're going there saying like, I just want somebody that can speak to the psychological trauma of, of, of whatever, whatever. I don't think they are putting the care and the thought. They're just like looking for sensational stories. I haven't had too much luck in those sites. You can try, but that would not be where I would look. Have you got anything to add to that, Mary? Yeah. The, uh, so with the sites, the only ones that I find that are beneficial are the ones where the guests are doing the work. So not what you were saying the other way around, where the host is making a, a blast and saying, I'm looking for guests. But if the guest is looking at shows and you can match yourself with the show. So one great website for that is podmatch.com. I have not had good luck with podmatch. You, you no, like podmatch. Uh, oh. just for finding guests. And okay. I use it more for uh, them pitching me. And if they have done that um, thoughtful pitch where they've listened to my show, they, they kind of figure out who my audience is. 
And that way I can look into their background. Their full bio is already there. Links to other episodes that they've been on is already there. I find it very mm -hmm. uh, easy and handy for that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was on Podmatch looking for guests there, but uh, yeah, I got a lot of people saying, I'll be on your show with yeah. no other information. It's like, thanks. Bye. Exactly. Okay. So the next thing we have is from Wellness Balancing. Hey, Barb. Does a podcast have to be the same length every episode? That's a great question. Mary? No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you can make it as long or as short as you like. There, um, quite a few years ago, there was this one podcast. Uh, she called it the 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever the 10 minutes was. And yes. it was a solo episode. Um, however, she actually found it very, very hard to fill 10 minutes worth of time. So she started padding it with extra information, which oh. you might think, oh, it's 10 minutes. It's not that long. It doesn't matter. But a listener will listen for as long as they are engaged with the content. And if it's yeah. just padded content, they're going to turn it off or fast yeah. forward and not care. So listeners don't mind how long an episode is because if the content is there, they're going to continue listening. For example, if you have a one hour long show, that's an interview with someone. If they're yeah. really engaged in that interview, but their commute time is only 30 minutes, for example, they're going to listen to the first 30 minutes of that episode on their commute to their work. And mm -hmm. then they'll listen to the last 30 minutes on their way back. Quite often, you know, yeah. I, I do that all the time. If I'm going for a walk somewhere, I'm walking to my appointment or I'm just doing the dishes, you just come back to it after the fact because you can always hit pause. And then when you yep. hit play, it's right right from where you hit pause. Yep. I've heard the average length, uh, you know, of all the podcasts out there, I don't know who did crunch the numbers, is about 40 minutes, which is not a huge commitment for podcast listeners because like we said, they're they're doing things. They're at the gym. They're on a commute. They're doing the dishes. They're doing housework. They're doing gardening. Uh, but some of my episodes have run as long as an hour. And I was really worried about that, but they were juicy episodes. And... They got good downloads. People enjoyed it. So yeah, yeah, there's no set amount of time that your no. podcast has to run. Like if you did the Google search for it, you might see, oh, it's like 23 minutes or like you said, 45 minutes. But that's the 23 and 45 minutes is based on broadcasting standards. So an hour long TV show would need to be about 45, 50 minutes because they had 10 minutes worth of commercials. Same with a 30 minute show. They only set 23 minutes as the limit because they had seven minutes worth of commercials on a podcast. You can do whatever you want. And yeah. I always take it back to what is your ideal listener? If they're a busy mom of two and they have a full time job, they're not going to really have time to listen to every episode that's one hour long. So what does your right. listener want? That mm -hmm. defines the content and then that defines the length. Okay. Do video podcasts do well versus audio only? Good question, Louie. Um, it, it depends. If your audience is, if you know that your audience is a mixture of people who are really into podcasts, but others who are more visual. And they, we, we know when you look at the demographics of who listens to podcasts, we know that the greatest number are in their late 20s to about 45. So if you've got a demographic that actually goes beyond that, the people older than 45 more likely are going to be watching videos. So it depends on what your audience is. As it happens, my audience is mixed and I get about, depending on the episode, I get about equal watches and downloads per episode. Um, it's a lot more work to do that, but it really depends on who you're serving with your content as to whether or not the videos do better or worse. Do you, I also do you find, ever deal with that, Mary? Yeah, it really depends too because where are you watching the video? Where is it posted? Versus audio only is on all the podcast apps. Or you can put it on your website with just a player. You know, video can is only YouTube, social media mm -hmm. posts, things like that. So you're limiting your audience for video, I would say. Yeah. And, yeah, and it it doesn't work very well if you're trying to then push your video on social media because none of the social media platforms want you dropping your YouTube exactly. links there. They don't want you leaving. Yeah. So, it's yeah. If if you know you've got a devoted video watching crew then definitely oh, Margo dropped a question and it is how do you get your audience to interact with you as a show host? 
All right, uh, Mary. Yes. The first thing is ask them. <laughs> I know it sounds easy, but people forget about that all the time. That if you want people to interact with you, you actually have to mention it on your show. You got to give them an easy way of doing it, whether that is an email address or um, having a voicemail on your website or even a phone number for them to call you. How is it that you want them to interact with you? It could be on social media as well. You can take their uh, messages and, you know, ask them for permission, of course, first. If it's okay, if you read that comment on your episode. But it's always nice to have um, some interaction with the actual person. So leaving a voicemail would be great. But if not, you know, just read their email, read their comments, and that encourages other listeners. When you finally get some audience interaction, it'll snowball because then other people will hear, oh, somebody else just did that. I'm going to do that too. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I've actually been really surprised to find that um, I, I was actually at my first social gathering a couple of weeks back and somebody at the party said, I love your podcast. I love it. I watch it on YouTube. I was like, you're kidding. You've been watching it from the outset. I had no idea. Why didn't you tell me? So yeah, to encourage your a bit of interaction with your watchers is, is really a good thing. Next one. I apologize if you already answered this, but what percentage of podcasts include video? It's rapidly increasing, especially this year with the investment, um, Mark Cuban actually is spurring the move towards that. They started with uh, Joe Rogan was the first Spotify podcast where they incorporated video and they're going to be moving to that. So in response to that, more podcasts are using video to go with the audio. I got to say though, and it actually, a very interesting fact is uh -huh. uh, vlogging. So video blogs. Yes. Yeah. It was, was, created around the same time that video podcasts. So video podcasts actually isn't a new thing. It's no. not something that's in addition to. It's already been around for a while, but then they didn't see an increase or a rise or growth from it. So video podcasts actually dropped. And then I would say in the last year or so, because of the pandemic, they're, they're wanting to grow it again because they think it's going to create impact. However, I personally think Podcasts are great when it's audio only. The video aspect is typically because there's so much work involved to do a, a well-produced video podcast. It's typically nowadays the Zoom call. It's the two heads like you see, you and me right now. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. your video podcast on YouTube channels. And it's not very engaging. So most people, no. even though you have a video podcast, they will actually just hit play and do things in the background. So they're not watching your video. And so there's no actual stat for it, but um, I will say there are a lot of podcast listeners on YouTube, even though they don't watch the video. So being Thanks. on YouTube is handy as well. Okay. You and I are both kind of gear geeks here. Okay. We've got a question from JD. Hey, JD. I have a gear question for you. What is your top recommendation for a broadcast quality microphone, say within the price range of $100 to $300 US? Thank you. Great. Oh, well, thank you. So what would, what's your recommendation, Mary, for somebody for, as a host? What is the, your hosting recommendation? And even for a guest, I would say make sure you, there are basically two types of microphones that uh, you can buy for a podcaster in that price range. One is called a dynamic microphone and one is called a condenser microphone. A condenser microphone is made for soundproof rooms. So most podcasters like us, we're running our business, we're recording our podcast in our office or living room. So that's not a soundproof booth. What you want to look for is something called a like dynamic microphone. So that will reject uh, the room noise. So my microphone that I have here, this is a Shure MV7, and I believe it's uh, 249 US. It is a dynamic. It has a USB plug-in as well as an XLR. And it rejects the room noise. So if I actually turn away this way, my voice gets really quiet and you can't hear my voice as well, which is great because it only wants to pick up your voice. It doesn't want to pick up the echo, your AC fan, if you have an open workspace, the fridge humming in the background or whatnot. So you want to make sure you get a dynamic microphone. And this one actually is pretty well suited for uh, your price range. Hmm. 
What I, um, what I recommend for somebody who's, especially a lot of people who are getting into guesting are a little bit taken aback by the whole need to actually invest in equipment. So what I suggest is, um, blue Yeti. It is basically foolproof. Let's, let's put it that way. It's plug and play for, it's the sweet spot between price, ease of use, the learning curve and the output. You end up with pretty good. Oh. I will say the caveat for that is that yes. a Blue Yeti is a condenser microphone. So it, it will pick up your room noise. Yes, which so is why you, I've gone with the big brother of the Yeti. This is the Yeti X. And it's, it's, I don't think it's a dynamic, but it's incredible in that with the cardioid setting, it's only picking up me. Yeah, you can't hear that bad. fan blasting on the other side of the room. <laughs> Can you? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I think that just about wraps up our time here. We're just one minute before. Thank you so much, Margo. Thanks for being here. Thanks everybody for coming. And Mary and I, as you can tell, are pretty passionate about helping businesses take advantage of this opportunity of the, the free, it's free. If you were going to go out and get somebody to create an hour long episode of you doing something, you, you'd be paying tens of thousands of dollars. This is a free opportunity to get your message out there, not on a social media that's polluted with messages and people putting cat memes up. This <laughs> You can, you can either get in touch with Mary or get in touch with me. Uh, we both have complimentary discovery sessions and strategy sessions. There's the link for mine. Mary's is that, and we'll be dropping them in the links on YouTube. And if you've got any questions, we would be more than happy to help you with this because we both are very passionate about helping businesses get involved. And on that note, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for being here as well, Mary. Thank you, September, for having me. I had a lot of fun. Me too. Bye.